Good evening. Stab the Dragon here with whiskey review number 26. And tonight we're looking at Tavacaro four grain bourbon from Grapevine or Palestine, Texas, one of the two. Now I'm going to be making a change to my format on these whiskey reviews. I've been giving an introduction and then walking my way through the 10 points of my grading system in a very detailed review, saving the scoring and recommendation for the end. But the length of these videos is a bit of a problem in that they're running just over 20 minutes. So now I'm going to jump into the total scores and recommendations right after my introduction. And this way people can get the quick review first, then if they want to hear the whole evaluation, they can stick around. A quick review of my broader purposes here is that I'm reviewing whiskeys from distilleries in Fort Worth and North Texas area, but I'm getting ready to expand that into the broader uh, area of Texas. You know, but we're blessed here in the Fort Worth area with many fine distilleries and a wide array of Texas whiskeys that are available. Uh, I have, you know, over the last eight months or so, tossed in some whiskeys on special occasions just to mix it up from, uh, you know, like Canada or Kentucky or, uh, you know, other, other places. But uh, here at Stab the Dragon, I have uh, some other content ranging from book and movie reviews, commentary on current events, and yes, some Bible studies and sermons. So I'm likely the only Baptist preacher who also does whiskey reviews. Now, on to the whiskey. This is Tawakero. My total score is a 95. I do believe that's the highest score I've given a whiskey with the possible exception of, of Blanton's uh, gold edition. Letter grade A+. Plus. Summary recommendation. Out of the 26 whiskey reviews, uh, this scored the highest so far with the exception I think of maybe Blanton's. I have to go back and double check that but those would be the top two. And this is an amazing bourbon. Uh, guess what? It's only one year old. Texas. The price and value for a craft distillery bourbon is about right, but the quality is through the roof. If you're drinking your way through Texas whiskeys like I am, this one is a must. If you're considering trying a Texas whiskey, this would be a great choice to start with. I haven't even gotten to my Balcones collection yet, but this Ta is the real deal. Now, word of caution, <clears throat> if you're a longtime Kentucky bourbon person, these Texas whiskeys are different. The char from the Texas heat makes these have a deep, rich funk that can be interpreted as smoky, perhaps, a little bit, but I really think that's the barrel char. Final conclusion, this is the best whiskey on paper, but I have to do a head-to-head -head competition to be sure. So, here's to, to Tavacaro. Let's look at the history. Zero to five points is the available score here. Tavacaro Distillery was started in Grapevine, Texas in 2016. Grapevine is in northeastern Tarrant County, where I reside. It's about 27 miles from home. I worked in Grapevine for 12 years, making that long commute five to seven days a week. Grapevine is right next to DFW Airport. Now, Justin Jackson is a proprietor who started this distillery. Uh, but along with his brother, Jason. Jason's the one with the prior experience at Axe and Oak Distillery in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And so together they have founded this wonderful distillery in North Texas. Now, what kind of a weird name is Tawakero? Well, that's an Indian name. It comes from the Indian name uh, Bend in the Creek, Bend in the River. That And the the Water there is, is Grapevine Creek, which provided water for the early settlers in Grapevine area. But here's the deal, and this applies to distilleries or Baptist churches, both. Be very careful about naming your place after a local geographic feature. Tabacaro, the whiskey company that is, moved to Palestine, Texas last year, quite a ways east and south of Dallas. So the name really no longer is close to where they are physically located. And things like that irritate me. 
This creek may have been the place where Sam Houston signed a peace treaty with the Indians in 1843. And, you know, they're in Grapevine. There's a park and some statues that commemorate all that. I have seen some other sources that disagree on that location, but, I, you know, I haven't dug deep down into uh, Texas history to, to figure out who's got the truth there. But Grapevine, you know, claims that they've got the statues commemorating the event, so I'm going to I'm going to go with Grapevine on that. Uh, now, about this whiskey in particular, this is a four-grain, grain-to-glass Texas whiskey. But how most distilleries start is they produce things like vodka, rum, or gin that can be quickly made and then get a revenue stream running for the distillery, right? Because whiskey takes time. Whiskey takes longer to develop, longer to age. But what the Jackson brothers did was a serious gamble. They put everything into making this bourbon and their rye. They had a recipe, they stuck with it, and because they're in Texas, it worked. What do I mean? The heat. The weather extremes of Texas help whiskey to age quickly. This bourbon is just over a year old, so it's not even a straight bourbon. They also use 30 gallon casks, which is another trick to fast aging as it gives the whiskey more contact with the wood. So just a few months after releasing this whiskey for the public, it was winning awards and competitions. It was an immediate success. Awards for this whiskey include Whiskies of the World 2019, Silver, New York International Spirits, Bronze, San Francisco World Spirits, Silver, International Whiskey Competition 2019, Best Texas Whiskey. So it was a high-risk operation that paid off. Five out of five for history. Let's talk about the marketing and the bottle or packaging for this whiskey. I don't recall seeing any advertisements for this bourbon, but I did see it reviewed by Daniel and Rex on the Whiskey Vault, and I saw its rather distinct bottle uh, in the you know, liquor store shelves. So I pursued it and, and watched. I read a bunch of reviews. So this whiskey is not obscure like some of the others I've reviewed from Fort Worth. This one's gotten a lot of attention. The bottle is designed off the shape of a canteen. So picture uh, an old western movie uh, and you see those round canteens. Or perhaps if you were a Boy Scout and you got a Boy Scout canteen. That's, that's what this is. Now, I've seen some reviewers say, hey, this looks like a barrel that's a slice from a barrel. Uh, well, you know, you could look at it that way, but uh, the sad thing there is uh, the owner of the company, uh, Mr. Jackson, in his video, explained the bottle and said, nope, that is a canteen-style bottle. So there you go. Uh, now, there's a problem, though, with this bottle. Is, is You might notice that it's very wide. Okay, so that takes up a lot of shelf space. So uh, one reviewer that I read said that he had observed a store that turned the bottles sideways to save on shelf space. But the problem is there's no label there, right? On either side, there's no label. And so, you know, some innovative clerk said, hey, I'm going to save some shelf space and turn them sideways. Well, there you go. Uh, maybe the distillery can fix that in the future with some uh, labels on the side, um, but I personally love this bottle shape. Okay, I mean the the whole canteen thing. I I dig it. Okay, that just makes so much sense for me. Uh, really, really like that. The glass itself is clear, which is weird because when I bought it, I thought the glass was tinted black, but that's just the whiskey. The whiskey is so dark that uh, I thought the bottle was. A black bottle absolutely now this cap the this cap is a problem okay uh, it's a short stubby affair it was very difficult to remove I think it's real cork uh, underneath there you know it kind of looks like real cork it kind of feels like real cork so I think I think that's real cork if it's imitation, it's a darn good imitation, but I think it's real cork. Uh, 
The caps are dipped in black wax, similar to another whiskey that we're all familiar with, except that would be red. Uh, so black wax there. And that was a mess to get off. I'm, I'm not a fan. So I didn't really like that. But uh, the, It's got this little tag here. And, and here's one of the weird things about this tag. The tag actually says... Uh, distilleries in Palestine, Texas. The bottle says Grapevine, Texas. So they moved a year ago. Uh, the company uh, was started in Grapevine and then in 2021 they uh, bought a property in Palestine, Texas and, and moved. So that's why the bottles I guess were older and they say Grapevine and then the tags make it clear that it's Palestine and, and then the videos from the distillery say Palestine now too. So uh, but that, that's a little bit of a confusion there. The only thing about the label I would like to see changed, besides putting something on the side for the stores, is maybe a picture of an Indian. I mean, if you're going to use an Indian name uh, for your distillery and for your whiskey, there should be something there that points to an Indian. You know, you've got a Western-style canteen, but no Indian. I don't know. It's kind of like, uh, well, there's a... A butter company in America that used to have an Indian princess on the front and they removed the Indian princess and so now I no longer buy that butter. But uh, you know, Tabacaro, they need to have an Indian on the front. The website I thought could be improved. Uh, the award medallions for this whiskey were almost too small to be red and there was no mash bill. Uh, stated on on the website. I had to do a little bit more digging for that. So for bottle marketing, yeah, really cool bottle. I like that, but a few glitches along the way. So a four out of five for marketing. Composition, the bottle calls this a four grain bourbon whiskey. So what are the four grains? On the back of the bottle, it says corn, wheat, rye, and malted barley. The website, however, says our corn comes from Valley View our rye from Denton, our malts from Fort Worth, and all our water from right here in Palestine. So let's see, corn, rye, malt, where's that, uh, where's the fourth grain? Where's the wheat come from? So there's a little bit of dissonance between the bottle and the website, and sadly that's really not uncommon in the whiskey business. I've found this uh, a few other times. Now the website also says that they're uh, spent grains feed local cattle, which that's a good thing. I'm glad they told us that. But wait, Jason Jackson of Ta has a video on YouTube that breaks down the composition with great detail. Okay, so, so there's a separate video that I didn't get off the website. I got it off of YouTube. And Jason Jackson, proprietor, says 65% corn, 11% wheat, 11% rye, 6% malted rye, 6% malted barley, and 1% Cara Amber malt, normally used for red beers. And then they give the char for the barrels as number four. This bottle is a 750 milliliter bottle. The ABV is 48, making it a 96 proof bourbon. This is a certified Texas whiskey. It's got that uh, there on the bottle. And uh, what that means is it's grain to glass Texas. So really, there, there is some remarkable precision. You have to dig for it a little bit. Uh, remarkable clarity here. So I'm going to say 15 out of 15 on composition. Physical appearance of this whiskey. Now you've seen it there in the bottle. Here it is in the glass. This is a remarkably dark whiskey. Okay, Very dark. One year old. One of the darkest in my collection. I think Balconis has got a couple that are darker, but physical appearance for a one-year-old whiskey, five out of five. Nose? Now my nose is notoriously bad, as I've said repeatedly, but I can smell the maltiness. I can smell the Texas funk. I can uh, smell the, the rich, sweet corn and a tad bit of char. So for me to be able to smell that, that, that's actually amazing. 8 out of 10 for the nose. Now for the taste. So 
Certainly the corn and caramel, strong in the Texas funk. The char is there. For only spending just over a year in the barrel, this has a lot of that Texas funk. I would need to compare this with some other Texas bourbons. I plan on doing that in the future in a, in a tournament, but the funk is strong with this one. It's buttery, definitely buttery. Dang. This is just way good. This is clearly another favorite. And the maltiness of the rye and the barley. I mean, this actually has a lot in common. You know, a few weeks ago, I did uh, a uh, single malt out of... Uh, distillery here here in Fort Worth uh, that was th this is reminding me of that yeah and then I've had a, a Balcona single malt lately too yeah it, this is not a single malt but it's got malted barley and malt, malted rye in here so yeah this this is really amazing so 24 out of 25 on the taste and the mouthfeel for a 96 proof I think this punches below its weight. While it's uh, it's nice and spicy, I'm not getting a strong alcohol burn up in my sinuses. It's smooth, but spicy due to that high rye content. The maltiness tempers it somewhat, I think, but it, this has a very nice creamy uh, mouthfeel to it. It's got a long finish, and it's it's not a long burn. I mean, there's there's a little bit of a burn going down, but not much. But the flavors linger. You know, the spiciness of it makes it tingly. This, again, a one-year bourbon, and this is amazing. This beats anything Kentucky has to offer, I think. Price, value, and availability. Uh, Total Wine has it for $47.99. Specs 61.57. Goody goody, where I bought it is 54.99. I think that online price for specs is off. That that just doesn't sound right for specs. I did not check that in the store. You know that's off their their website. Uh, that that may be the barrel proof price, but you know I, I was looking at that and said eh, something's wrong with your price there. Uh, but even the goodie price I, that I paid, you know, fifty four ninety nine, I think it's worth it. And the total wine price forty seven ninety nine, it's way worth it. This is a great Texas craft whiskey. I'm a major fan of this now. Uh, it's available at all the stores I fre frequent. Uh, th this is a high value for uh, the price, absolutely. So ten out of ten for uh, value. Neat mixer, absolutely great neat. It's strong enough uh, at 96 though, 96 proof to be used in a cocktail without uh, you know hiding it. And so I, I just don't know what kind of cocktail you would use uh, with this. Uh, I'm just not into cocktails, but you know the the flavor here is so strong and the 96 proof is strong, so I, I think it would work well in a cocktail. But uh, man, this is just so good, neat. I really can't see wasting it in a cocktail. I don't know. So five out of five for uh, being a neat or mixer. Bonus points, five points. Local, at least it used to be local, now it's in Palestine. But five points for bonus. And again, this is an amazing one-year-old bourbon. So all that uh, combined together, and you know that, that's given me that uh, total score of 95, an A+. Plus. So if you are drinking your way around Texas, I highly recommend uh, Ta, uh, Ta Caro. This is an amazing bourbon. Well, that's all for Stab the Dragon tonight. And this is uh, May 9th, 2022. So we will sign out now and check you later next time. Out here. <laughs>